Genesis chapter 22. I'm going to take, you know, in this passage, um, it speaks about God's provision. Abraham says here in verse 8, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And that's what, that's what we're praying for tonight, that God will provide a pastor for Zion Baptist Church. I want to look at this idea of God's provision. And I've put in the heading, God will provide. Because it says here in verse 13, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and be, and looked behind him and saw a ram in the thicket caught by its horns, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering. And it goes on, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. That name means God will provide. God sees and God will provide. And you know, that's why we're coming to prayer tonight. God already knows the, the situation for our, our church, and, uh, and we're confident tonight that God will provide. So I'm going to take the word provide. And just look at these verses very quickly before we come to prayer. First of all, we'll start with the P. And the P is in the first, uh, the first two verses. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Maria, and offer him there for a burnt offering. Uh, upon the mount which I will tell thee of. And it goes on to say in verse 3 that when Abraham prepared everything, it says he rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. The place was Maria, Mount Maria, Mount Moriah. Ultimately, that would be where the temple mount would be, where Solomon would build the temple. Remember over in Second Chronicles, uh, Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 3 and verse 1 you'll get that, I'll just read this very quickly for you, and Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah where the Lord appeared unto David his father, so Mount Moriah would be where the temple mount would be and Solomon would build the temple because that would be the place that would be the place where Abraham would be called to make this sacrifice and ultimately we know that speaks of where our Lord and Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, was offered. So this was the place. God chose the place. God had provided the place. Amazing, isn't it? God even had to provide the place where Abraham would make that sacrifice, and God had to provide the place where his own son would be sacrificed. It's amazing when we think about that. that to, be, to take your son and, and have him crucified is one thing. But to actually prepare it all, have the place prepared for that very, that very act of your your own son being being sacrificed and offered, that's something more than just other people. It just being taken away to a place and offered. God actually prepared the place and told Abraham to go to a certain place because God knew this place and God had revealed it to him that this was the place where Abram had to go. You know, it says it was, it says it took three jump, three days journey because if you look over at the, the first, uh, the last couple of verses of Genesis 21, it says in verse 32, thus they made a covenant. Remember that was the covenant with Abimelech and Abraham. Where did they make the covenant? They made it in Beersheba. And that, and it's, it's immediately after this that God tests them. And it's three days' journey from Beersheba to Jerusalem. That's why it took three days to go from the place where God challenged Abraham to the place where he would ultimately sacrifice and offer up his own son. Three days' journey. That's, that's, that in itself, that in itself uh, is a challenge. You know, when God challenges us about something, you know, Abraham had three days to contemplate everything that was going to take place. Three days, that would, he, would, he would have all that time to think about what was going to happen when he got there. Amazing, isn't it? And yet he never changed his attitude towards the challenge that God had given him. Sometimes we can be, 
you know, sometimes if we're pushed into making a quick decision about something, we'll maybe do it because we don't have a lot of time to think about it. But Abraham here had three days. God had all that time to think about what was going to happen. And yet God would go right through. God would go right through with it. And Abraham here, ultimately a beautiful example, would go right through. And God, that's what God's asking us tonight. Are you going to go right through? This is the place, this is the place where God's brought you to tonight, Zion Baptist Church. Are you going to go right through? Are you going right through with the purposes of God for your life? Are you going to go right through? At the time, we've had we've had quite a quite a time to, to consider, you know, that we've not had a pastor for quite a number of years now. Are you prepared to go through with God's purpose for your life? God's plan for your life. That's the challenge, brothers and sisters. And very quickly to the next, the next point R. That's P for the for for in the first letter for provide R for what our reaction. How do we react to these things? How do we react to not having a pastor for this long, this quite a considerable time? Look at look at Abraham's reaction when God challenged him. In verse three. It says, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and clave the wood, even prepared the very wood for the altar the burnt, and rose up and went unto the place of which God told him. Look at his reaction. You know, how do you feel? What's your reaction? When God asks you to come and pray for a new pastor, what's your reaction? Well, We've been praying for 17 years, and as yet we haven't had a pastor. What's your reaction? Do you rise up and say, yes, yes, Lord, I'm going to get into this prayer time. I'm going to do exactly what you asked me to do. I'm going to, because right now, brothers and sisters, I don't think there's any doubt about it. God's challenging us in all of these things. God's challenging us in our Christian walk. God's challenging us in our faith. God's challenging us in many ways. We're all being challenged individually in the circumstances that we meet every day, the situation of church without a pastor, with different things that's happening. We're being challenged all the time. What's your reaction to that? Well, Abraham's reaction was, you know, it wasn't a simple thing God was asking Abraham to do. Take the very child that you prayed for and you waited all those years for, and now take him and offer him as a sacrifice. Wow. And you know what? Abraham didn't hesitate. Abraham didn't hesitate. It says he rose up early. Sorry, I'm just trying to... Something keeps coming up on the screen. I'm just... It's okay, it's on my screen. Uh, Abraham's challenged right away, and it says he rose up early. No hesitation. It says in... It tells us in the Word of God that Abraham was strong in faith. Remember? And what seemed impossible... What seemed an impossible situation in Abraham's life pre previous to that, over in Romans chapter 4, became a reality because Abraham was strong in faith, it says, who against hope believed in hope that it might become, he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. This was before Isaac was born. When he was about a hundred years old, neither the, the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And ultimately, God rewarded his faith, and God provided him a son. But now God was now, now God was asking him to do something for God, and God was asking him to take him now offer him. And you know, it's when we look at that, when we look at Abraham. It's, a, it's an amazing testimony of Abraham that he doesn't hesitate. He gets up early and he goes about exactly what God has asked him to do. It's an amazing reaction. You know, maybe maybe if you've, in the, in the climate we're, we're living in tonight, maybe something might happen to you. Maybe you might catch this COVID or something might happen to you and you'll think, oh, we've been doing our best to try and 
not let anybody in the church get this. Now we're catching it. Now we're doing this. What's your reaction to that? Obviously, the Lord knows that these things are going to happen. You still trust in God. That no matter whether you catch these things or not, God is still with you. God will bring you through it. God will, God will strengthen you. And God will ultimately bring you through these things. We're all challenged at times as how we react to certain things that happen to us in our life. But ultimately, this is the supreme. This is something supreme. This is something more than any of us have been asked to do, to take our own son and offer him. Because God has asked us to do it. Amazing, isn't it? Abraham's reaction here. And then very quickly, the O for O is the next point. And you'll get that in, in verse 3 uh, again. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took his two young men with him. And Isaac, his son, and clave the wood for the burnt oil and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. Look at Abraham's obedience. Take, take your only son. It says over in verse 2, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, Notice it points out that Abraham loved Isaac. Take the son that you love. That's a hard one, isn't it? Take that which you love. And get thee into the land of Maria and offer him there for a burnt offering. I don't know what our reaction might be to something like that if God asked us to give up something in our life. I don't know how we'd react. We don't really know until it would happen to us. But Abraham's a beautiful example to us. That even though God had given him this beautiful son, Isaac, he was now asking him to offer him. And Abraham's obedient, so obedient, that it says over in Hebrews chapter 11, and I'll read this for you, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive and obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. Then it goes over to verse 16, 17. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. It's amazing, uh, Abraham's obedience to the challenge of God. How, how obedient are we going to be tonight? As we are, or what faith do we have in God tonight that God's going to raise us up a pastor? Or have we got so, so our head went down? Have we got to that stage where, oh, I find it so hard. I find it so hard to pray for a new pastor. I find it so hard, so difficult. Well, all I can say, all you can see in this passage was, you know something? God provided. God provided for Abraham. God even provided for Isaac. Even that Isaac wouldn't be offered. Even provided, as you know, even provided the ram. In this passage, you'll see that God provided. That's why I'm looking at it tonight, to encourage you. God provided in all the challenges that Abraham was asked to fulfill, God provided. And you know, if we think of what God is asking us tonight to believe him, that he can, he can uh, raise up a man of God, is that something too hard to ask? Is that something too hard to believe? That, that it's too hard for God to raise up a man of God, too hard for God to be able to recover all the things that, in some way, we've lost, since we've lost a pastor, the authority of a man of God in the pulpit, the respect of a man of God in the pulpit, the obedience to a man of God in the pulpit. These different things are so important. Some of these things we've lost as a congregation. But very quickly, the V, and that's V for veil. Look at verse 13 of this, of this passage. I know you're very familiar with this passage of scripture. I'm just going through it very quickly. It says here in verse 12, and he said, and this is, this is as Abraham is about to offer his son Isaac. 
And the angel said to him, and he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And it goes on to say in verse 13, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. You see, it doesn't say that Abraham looked and saw the ram. It says he looked behind him. Abraham didn't take the knife to plunge it into Isaac because, because he could see the ram in the thicket. No, the ram was behind him. He couldn't see it. He couldn't see that God had made provision for him in the ram that was behind him. Sometimes we can't see that God asked us to just pray in blind faith, believing God. God doesn't always show us that he's going to come and deliver us. God doesn't always show us. He asks us to trust him. And that, that's, that's in the word of God very clearly to show us that Abraham just trusted God because the ram wasn't in front of him, it was behind him. Remember when, he, remember when um, God had promised a son to Abraham and Sarah? They laughed because Sarah said, I can't be young, the age I've been able to bring forth children. And God says, because you're going to call his name Isaac, because Isaac means laughter. That fellow that was in the church on Sunday's name's Isaac. Did you hear him laughing? That's because he's fulfilling his character. He's a laugher. He, he enjoyed, he had a laugh in the church. His name is Isaac. And God named that child Isaac deliberately because even Abraham and Sarah both laughed. And God's done that deliberately to remind them that they laughed. And there was an occasion when they laughed at the promises of God. I hope you're not laughing at the promises of God tonight. But I hope you're strong in faith, believing God, that God will provide, brothers and sisters. It says that he looked behind him. Sometimes we don't always see what's in front of us. We can't always see. We can't always see how God's going to bring that man of God. We can't always see how it's going to take place. But we have to trust God, that God knows. God knows exactly how he's going to do it. We've got to trust him. And just like, just like over Luke 24, very quickly, remember Luke 24, when the Lord Jesus is crucified and the the resurrection morning, remember what happens? There was, there was two on the road to Emmaus. And what did they say? Verse 21, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. See, we trusted. We trusted that this would happen. We trusted that he would be the Messiah. He would be the one who would redeem Israel. He tr we trusted but they didn't know that eyes had to be opened. The veil had to be removed. That's what it says down in verse 30. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened. And they knew they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. See, brothers and sisters, some, sometimes we go through a situation of darkness and uncertainty and all our, all our hopes are dashed. But then the Lord comes through the word or personally comes and speaks to us and shows us and removes the veil from our eyes because we can't see clearly that God's in control and God ultimately will provide. What God said he'll do, he will fulfill and he will provide. That's what happened to the saints here in this situation. They thought, we trusted. You might be saying that tonight, but I trusted. I trusted years ago. I trusted for a past. I trusted. God's got to open your eyes afresh tonight, if that's the case, and show you that God's in control and that the Lord is still operates. God's still working this purpose out according to his appointed uh, time. And very quickly, I, for the next word in provider, I'll go through these last couple of points very quickly. It says in verse 12, And he said unto him, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for I now know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. You know, see when we ask God, see when we ask God for things, sometimes God will ask us for something. And what God will ask us for sometimes is 
something that's an idol for an idol to his eye for idol. You know what what this what this verse is saying is that you know something? Abraham feared God. And he feared God so much that you know what? He didn't even want to put his own beloved son between him and God. He didn't want to make him an idol. You know, in our Christian life at times, we can make things idols. We can make our son an idol, our daughter, our husband, our wife. We can make things in our life an idol. But God can say, God make challenges and say, offer that up to me. Put that in the altar for me. That's holding you back. That's an idol. Abraham was challenged on that. You want me to provide? Right, you, you put that on the altar. You want me to provide? Put your disobedience on the altar. You want me to provide? Put your put put all, all the things that I'm asking you to do, put them up, put them away. Get get back to the church. Get 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 your life organized. Do things, don't 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 make your job an idol. Don't make your big fancy house an idol. Don't make your nice car an idol. Don't make things idols. Put them, put them secondary to me, to serving me and living for me, and I'll provide. That's what God was challenging Abraham on. God could be challenging us on that tonight. You want you want a pastor? Well, you know something? I'm asking you for something. I'm asking you for obedience in your life. I'm asking you for different things. You know what God's asking you for tonight. I don't know what it is. You and God know what God's asking you for. That's personal between you and God. You want me to provide? Right, okay, I'm asking you to put this in the altar. Don't turn things in, don't turn the things of this world into idols. Don't even turn a pastor into an idol, because that can happen. People can turn their pastor into an idol, and then God takes them away. Because there's only one who's supreme above them all, and that's God Himself. He's the only one we have to raise up and to put first in our life very quickly. It says it took three days to get to the place that God had showed Abraham. Because, you know, as I said to you, three days speaks of the fullness of time. You know, it says in Galatians chapter 4, God, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them who were under the law. You know, God already knows. God already knows. He already had appointed a time when his own, per, his own only beloved son would be sacrificed. God's appointed a time for these things. And God's appointed a time for us, for our new pastor. When you go to uh, Genesis chapter 18, I'll read this very quickly. This is when God was promising Abraham a son. And I mentioned about how Sarah laughed. And it says in verse 10, And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? And verse 14 says, Is anything too hard for the Lord at the time appointed? And brothers and sisters, there's a time appointed for all these things. But we've got to wait. And we, when we wait, God will provide. But we've got to trust God, got to believe, got to pray tonight that God has a purpose in all of this. God has a purpose and a plan in your life and my life tonight. But very quickly, the last verse is, the last point is E, and you'll get that, and I'll, I'll read from verse 16. I'll read it from verse 16. And this is what the angel of the Lord said. By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, 
And that's the last point, E for earth and the word provide. The earth will be blessed. All nations of the earth will be blessed. And that ultimately came to pass. God, God brought that to a fulfillment in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made all curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Why? Why all that? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brothers and sisters, in all of these verses and passages we've looked at tonight, I've sought to show you that God provided. God provided exactly what he said he would provide. And you know something? We've got to trust God tonight that God will provide us a pastor. If God provided for Abraham, provided in every single thing, and he saw Abraham's reaction, he saw his obedience, he saw these things. If your reaction is right, if our obedience to God is right, if our attitude towards God is right, if we love the Lord and we believe his word, we'll come to him in faith tonight, believing that God's going to raise up a man of God for us, believing that God has a purpose for this church, a purpose for our life, a purpose to raise up a man of God. You know why? And not just we'll be blessed, but people on this earth, people in our city will be blessed by a new pastor. Other families coming to the church will be blessed with a new pastor because God is a great provider. Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. And may God bless you.